Making your own pastel sticks from old pastel dust or new pastel ground is easier than you may think and it works great. You can also achieve colors that you may not be able to get elsewhere and you know how pure the sticks are. It's cheaper and personally rewarding. You can say, I made these sticks. Terry Lynn, Traveling Artista. In this video, I want to share with you how I have discovered how to make my own pastels. You can create some very unique colors and you don't waste that pastel dust that falls down when you are painting. Also, you can use some ground pigment, start from there. And the other thing I'm going to try is making it from some local dirt. I found some soft local dirt, I ground it down, I sifted it, and I'm going to try making a pastel like that. You may have seen some different videos, but go ahead and follow along. You might learn something a little different. And I'm going to go over the supplies and the process. Tools. Here's some of the tools I use. This is a flexible mudding spatula, a palette knife. I use a bristle brush to help me move pastels around if needed. I have some filtered or distilled water and a dropper to help me gauge how much to put on the dust when I'm creating the pastels. This is just some 50% isopropyl alcohol. I'm saving the good stuff for COVID, the high test. I have a filter, a screen filter, lots of gloves because when you're rolling those pastels you want to use gloves so that it doesn't get all over your hands. You need a mortar and pestle to ground down some of your pigment. Then of course you want paper towels and some microfiber or just rags to help you clean up. Now here we have our pigment. You have a couple of kinds. When you are painting pastel and you save your pigment in a little trowel under your easel, go ahead and put it and save it into a little jar and then you can grind that up and make new pastel. I have different colored jars like blue and yellow and different ones. You can also purchase pigment. These were sold to me by a lady, wonderful price. Every now and then you run into that. She mentioned it, I grabbed it, it was great. I'm excited to try these ground pigments. Or you can purchase some new, which I did here. Other pigments you can use are in a store. Sometimes people will drop pastels, pan pastels, and they crumble, or pastel sticks, and the store will sell them at a discounted price. That's a pretty good thing to have. And here, I am going to experiment with some dirt. This was some beautiful kind of reddish ochre dirt that I found in the backyard. I have sifted it a number of times. I've ground it down. I sifted it again. Going to try with that. Here, I have some pastels that I made before. You can see these in the front have other particles in them. I didn't grind them down quite far enough, but I wanted to try to see what would happen. When I'm using those, they leave lines. If you want that texture, that's fine. I've decided I don't, don't really want that that much. And yesterday I made a couple of my own colors from a combination of these pigments. This I am trying to imitate eggplant, and this I needed a light grayish purple. So you can create amazing colors, the ones you're after, the ones you keep running out of. Go ahead and try. I don't really keep track too much because I like to experiment and get new colors. Going back to the gum tragacanth, this is if you're using just the pure pigment and it's not from an another stick. The other sticks that you used, of course, already had some of this in it. This is a natural gum obtained from the dried sap of several species of Mideastern legumes. It's viscous, I can never say that. Viscous, thank you. Odorless, tasteless, water-soluble mixture of polysaccharides obtained from that sap, and it's drained from the root of the plant. So this is all natural. It's good stuff, and you don't need much of that to help hold those particles together. All right, I think that's about it. Let's get started. Just over a year ago was the first time I tried to reconstituting used pastel dust into new pastel sticks. And as I said, it's a lot easier than I expected. I did learn some things from that experiment. One is grind the dust so it is consistently super fine. And another is to blend the colors well so you don't end up with funny, streaky surprises. 
Of course, sometimes you may want that. Be prepared for a mess. If you prepare well, you can clean up pretty quickly and easily. Whether you start with old pastel dust or new ground pigment, the process is basically the same. You can even combine the two. Save the pastel dust that falls from your easel. I use a little trowel that I create. It's usually made out of heavy aluminum foil in the shape of a V or a U. And then I carefully brush this dust into jars for future pastel making. I label different jars, different families of color, basically like yellow or reds or blues. My aim is to keep the process as simple and efficient as possible. I want to get back to painting as soon as I can. Here, as you can see, I've been grinding the powder and mixing it well. I've gone back and forth a couple of times to make sure that it is very fine and very well mixed. Next, I put the pastel dust onto a flat surface. Usually a plate of glass is nice. As you made sure that the pastel colors are mixed thoroughly in powder form, or you can mix them later in the paste form, it just takes a little bit longer. Make the pile of powder and slowly add drops of water or alcohol and a little gum tragacanth until you create a workable thick paste. It's good to start slowly and add a bit at a time so you don't get the pastel overly wet. There's a touch of gum tragacanth. You kind of want the consistency of, um, say, Play-Doh. That's a good comparison. Mix the, past, the paste thoroughly, like you're blending colors to paint. I use the spatula and my palette knife. Back and forth, scraping off, going back in, slowly blending. Sometimes it almost feels like I am making pastry dough. I cut it with a spatula and I go in different directions. Right here, the paste is a little wet, but that's okay, it can dry. Often instead of adding more of the water, it's good to add more of the alcohol because it will dry faster. And you can see here, I'm cutting it to blend it. I cut it in one direction, kind of flip it and cut it in the other direction. This kind of helps with very consistent blending of the paste. Do this a few times to get a good consistency. Check it out, see how it's looking. Then you can move on and set it aside. In this particular color, I set it aside for a while before shaping it because it had gotten a little wet. Here. Both of the colors are a little drier. I'm starting with a lighter stick that I had added more of the pigment ground. I think I was using titanium white to get a lighter color, a lighter tint. You can shape the pastels. Shape them into whatever kind of structure you want. Keep in mind that you want them to fit into the pastel box that you're going to keep them in. Do you want round, squared, oblong? There's so many options. Cut them a little bit if you need to do that. You can look at some of the professional pastels to get ideas of shapes. Or you could already have some good ideas like what is my favorite shape? Do I want to cover large areas with this? Make a large flat pastel. I'm flattening it out a bit so it will cover a large area on the painting, but also it will still fit in my pastel box. 
Here I'm cutting it in half to make a couple of sticks. Shape them up. You can round them. You can kind of encourage that squareness to it if you want a sharp edge when you're painting. There's so many options and you are in control. I then put them on a paper towel to dry them. And drying it depends on so many factors. It can take anywhere from two, maybe two days up to a week. When they are no longer cool to the touch, then the moisture has evaporated. Using the alcohol, as I said, speeds up this process. I was so surprised the first time I used these. They are so soft and buttery and easy to use. Now my first homemade pastels get lost in my palette. It's hard to tell them from the ones I had purchased. Here we are. Now let's try them out. I have a couple of UART papers, sanded papers here. One is a 400 and one is a 600. The 400 is the buff color. I'm dragging them across from the buff to the black, which is a 600 paper, to see how they're acting. They are wonderful. Whoop, that one was a little bit too soft and broke. I should have probably added a little more of the gum trigacanth into that lighter one because there was so much white pure pigment in it, it needed more binder, just a touch more. Now oftentimes people will add pumice into it to give a gritty feeling, but I like that buttery effect. These are great for finishing pastels, rich, pure, wonderful. As I get to the end here, that green and that yellow were pastel sticks I made before, and there are some inconsistent colors in there, and they tend to give me a streaked effect. But again, you might want that. Now it's your turn. You've seen how basically easy this is and the wonderful colors and softness that you get with these pastel sticks. Go to my website here, ask me for the list of supplies and the process, and I'll send it to you. Enjoy and stay dusty, my friends.